Welcome to the Redbrick AI Annotation Tool. No matter what images or volumes you'll be working with within your project, you'll be greeted with the same four general zones of our annotation tool the first time you open it, and every subsequent time. The four zones are the central canvas, which can consist of a single or several viewports, the left-hand toolbar, which mostly has to do with the structures that you'll be annotating as well as any other data attributes, the top bar, which is where you can configure your environment settings and your segmentation toolkit, and the right-hand context panel where most of these configuration settings will appear. First, I'm going to discuss environment settings. If you'd rather skip to the section of the tutorial where we discuss creating, editing, modifying annotations, please feel free to do so. Our first environment setting is going to be windowing which is located in the top left corner. And you'll see that when I click on it, the context panel for it displays in the right where I can very easily regulate the width level and label opacity for whatever viewport I have currently selected. At this point, the top left viewport. You can also control label opacity for any annotations that you've drawn, as well as uh, decide whether or not you'd like to see the outline of that label or not. Next up, we have thresholding settings. And as you can see, clicking on the thresholding button enables the thresholding range for whatever viewport you currently have selected. This range can be controlled manually in the right-hand context panel, and you can also enable or disable the preview at any point in time. Please note that even if you have the thresholding preview disabled, the thresholding panel in the top left is still activated which means I can only annotate within the strict range defined by that threshold. For now, I'm going to deactivate my thresholding panel so that I can continue on with the demo. Next up in our environment settings is the layout button. And as you can see, our layout button shows that we have four individual series, making this a multi-series study. Click on the layout tab, or the layout button, to expand the layout tab. At the very top, you have the ability to configure your layout tab as best suits you using any combination of between one to one and three to three views. You can also use the series selector to quickly rearrange your views. Please bear in mind that you can uh, expand or collapse any individual series in order to access the projections. And all of these windows can be easily dragged and dropped to rearrange. Within each individual viewport, you'll see a hamburger menu on the top right. I highly recommend clicking through these options and experimenting on your own so that you can figure out which of these options are most applicable for your use case. But right now, we'll quickly, quickly touch on some of the most common ones. Namely, maximizing a viewport, which allows you to, in a 2x2 two two view or 2x3 view, to centralize a single viewport and access any other ones you'd like for reference. Please note that when you have a viewport maximized, you can double click on any other viewport available to swap between them. Within the hamburger menu of the viewport itself, you also have access to MPR layout. And if you'd like to enable multiplanar reconstruction, all you have to do is click here. And you'll see that your series displays in uh, the axial projection as well as this reconstructions. In the top left, you also see that crosshairs have been enabled for easy access and reference while annotating. Uh, and please do bear in mind that you can dis either disable the crosshairs by going back to the select tool or using the command bar in the bottom right or by using control K to toggle permanent crosshairs at any time. One final note on MPR layout. Anytime you enable NPR layout for a specific series, in this case, we have series D, you'll create a new layout tab for yourself that you can easily reference in the future. I'm gonna to return to our original layout tab here so that we can continue the tutorial. Next up in our top bar is the comments panel. And when I click on the comment panel in the top bar, you'll see that a little text field appears in the top right here where I have the ability to leave a comment for other members of my team to view. For example, 
Now that I have a comment that I'd like to leave for an admin or for a reviewer, I can click on comment to create the comment. And you'll see that a record has been created. I can also choose to pin the comment to a place on the canvas. So let's just choose this ventricle here and scroll to a completely different slice. Pinning a comment allows other members of your team to very easily reference it. All they have to do is come down and click on the comment and they'll be instantly teleported to the slice. If you find yourself in a situation where you feel you're no longer able to work, you have the ability to raise an issue. So let's come up with an issue right now. Let's presume that on slice 80, I found a problem that is too severe for me to solve by myself and I'm unable to continue work. All I have to do is generate text for this and then click on raising an issue. As this warning shows you, raising an issue on a task will remove this from your queue and then you'll be able to continue work on something else, whatever's next up in your queue. Whenever an admin responds to your query and sends it back to you, then you'll be able to continue work on this specific task. So we're gonna click X on this for now because that's not what we want to do. Speaking of your queue, the next button here displays a list of the tasks that you currently have assigned to you, as well as some helpful icons for each, such as displaying which tasks have auto cached already, which tasks are assigned to you, which tasks are in progress, and much more. You can very easily click on any of these to navigate between any available tasks that your admin has designated for you. Let's move on to actual annotation. The left-hand toolbar contains a list of the structures that you're able to annotate. Please note that your admin may have done anything from leaving hints for you on specific structures. These hints can contain helpful instructions or other guidelines as well as links to implemented features such as annotation nesting for ease of viewing. There are several different types of object labels, in this case structures, that are available within Redbrick AI, and you can easily mouse over each of them to get a sense of what you'll be working with. In our case, let's create a simple segmentation, specifically an abscess, by clicking on the plus button or using the numeric hotkey. You'll see that an instance of the segmentation has been generated and some several segmentation tools are now visible in the top bar. For all of these segmentation tools, as well as various environment settings, you can hover over them to get access to a specific tutorial. These tutorials are extremely helpful to show you tool-specific hotkeys, common flows, and other tips and tricks, and I highly recommend you check them out. With my brush tool selected, I'm going to move over to series B Use a hotkey to make my brush tool smaller and left click to draw. We have an approximation of a segmentation here, but maybe I want to get in closer. I can use shift click to pan, control and mouse scroll to zoom in. And we can now start, even start to see the pixelation on the segmentation mask. So if I feel I've gone outside the borders, as I've done here, all I have to do is right click to erase. The right hand context panel also contains several simple settings, such as paint erase, 2D and 3D mode, as well as brush size. If you'd rather use a slider to control the brush size, you can also choose to enable overlapping labels or disable editing the background. If you'd like to really control the operational area in which you're doing your work. Finally, within a viewport, if you want to return to your original view, simply use the space hotkey. For any individual label that you generate, there's also a variety of actions that you can do to it. For example, you can lock a label if you don't want to have any further work done and you don't want to make sure that no modifications can be applied to it. You can also show or hide a label. You can toggle the highlight which turns it to a bright green. Not a particularly great example given the abscess itself is green, but it's much more visible with these other pastel type colors. And one other very important one is jump to label. 
So for example, if I was working on another part of this image and I lost track of this instance, all I have to do is open this hamburger menu here or just hit Shift J and that will teleport me immediately to the nearest slice containing this instance. Depending on your project, your admin may also ask you to ascribe certain attributes to a specific series or to an entire study. These attributes in Redbrick AI are called series or study classifications, respectively. You can see in our case, our admin has left uh, us with the task of ascribing scan quality and maybe left us even with some instructions for this for each of our series, series A, series B, C, and D. I'm going to do that quickly. Now that I've ascribed a scan quality attribute to each of these scans, you'll see that four data points have been generated here. There's no limit to the number of series classifications that you can create, and all of them have to be either Booleans, text fields, single selects, or multi-selects. These same attribute types can also be applied to a study. In this case, we have white matter hyperintensities. So I'm simply going to choose one and make sure that that data point is available upon export. And now I'm going to navigate to the top right to save my work. I can also just use the hotkey of Command S or Windows S if you're working on a Windows machine. The bottom right hand corner of your display contains two little buttons here that can be extremely valuable. This one in the bottom right that resembles a speech bubble is known as the command bar. And it is a full list of all of the functions that you can generate and do uh, within Redbrick AI. Two ones that are maybe useful for your purposes are toggling permanent crosshairs, which allows you to completely disable the NPR crosshairs if you don't have the crosshair tool selected specifically and toggling pixel interpolation. So let's just do this quickly for series B and I'll zoom in. And you can see how pixelated this specific display has become. I'll use command K to open the command bar again and toggle this off so that we can quickly visualize the difference here. And there you go. The bottom right hand uh, part of the display also contains the help button which you can use to check your current version, email our support team, and please do email us if you find any have any questions, concerns, or have any just general clarifications about our annotation tool or any other part of the UI. You can also access our change log and documentation. And I highly recommend reviewing our keyboard shortcuts as spending just a few minutes with this will eventually send you save you hours uh, while you're performing your annotation work. Finally, we've come to the save bar. Tasks can have several states within Redbrick AI and they, which one you use depends on where you're at in your workflow. Every three minutes, you'll see that Redbrick saves by itself, but you can also manually save at any time. Each of these annotation versions can be independently referenced. If you'd like to compare differences between different moments in your workflow or completely restore an annotation set. The skip button does exactly what you would think it does and allows you to move to the next item in your queue. And you'll see a chevron here that allows you to do one of two things. If you'd like to submit a draft of your work that you can come back to and reference, I highly recommend submitting a draft. This will allow you to leave this task while saving your work and return to it later if you'd like to you know, implement corrections, modifications, or things of that sort. If you are completely done with your work on a task, then be sure to select finalize. And as soon as you click on this finalize button, your work will be pushed down your data pipeline, potentially uh, becoming unavailable to you. This has been a comprehensive overview of Redbrick AI's annotation tool. If you have any questions or concerns, please do reach out to us and our support team. We're always happy to hear your feedback. And in the meantime, best of luck.